thank you all very much for uh, coming and uh, um, it's a great honor for me to, to be the recipient, the recipient uh, of the of our Benel Prize. And um, I thought, um, what was the path? How, how did I get here? And um, so first of all, I did all of my uh, studies at Tel Aviv University. I first did a double major math and physics. Uh, and I didn't know what I would like to study later on. Uh, uh, computer science was not that hot at the time. And um, I, I got in love with applied math, and I continued into applied math. Um, my, PhD, my master's and PhD advisor was uh, not Sal, but uh, uh, Zev Schuss, who unfortunately also um, uh, passed away a few months ago. Um, and I, I, I remember I, I really enjoyed my studies uh, at Tel Aviv University, and uh, I, I, I'm very glad to see here many of the uh, teachers that, that taught me and, and, and gave me really first-class education. And I'll, I'll mention, and I hope I don't remember any, I, I remember everybody, uh, Gadi and uh, Nira Dean and David Levine and uh, Phil Rosenau and uh, Eitan Tadmor and uh, uh, Steve Shochat and... Uh, all of them taught me courses, uh, and uh, uh, I think also the late Ami Harten, who unfortunately died many years ago. Uh, so uh, uh, I think they all have, uh, two of them already claimed a little bit of credit, but, but uh, I'd like to uh, share, take this opportunity and thank all of them for, for uh, um, giving me a, a really first grade education and tools that, that got me to where I am. Uh, I would also... Um, of course, I'd like to thank uh, my parents uh, who uh, pushed me to, to excellence when I was young and also my wife uh, who's here uh, and my family. Without her support, I would not uh, be standing here today. Um, as I said, Saul uh, Shalom was not my advisor and, and yet I have very fond memories of him. First, he taught me uh, also the course in hydrodynamics, but uh, in contrast to uh, uh, Kobe, who, had to leave, uh, uh, we were more than two students, and uh, uh, maybe it became more famous. Uh, uh, but I remember he was very uh, clear in his teaching, was very didactic, uh, very, uh, um, it, was, it was a real joy to, to study. Uh, and the other fun memory I have of Sal, as, as Simon mentioned, uh, 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 Shalom was very broad, and even though my, my research was in different topics, it, when I would give a, a seminar talk at Tel Aviv University, it would have very insightful comments, remarks, suggestions, and one of them actually uh, uh, really improved one of the papers I wrote. Um, so um, I think that uh, it may be could be already mentioned, but I think on behalf of all the mathematical uh, uh, community in Israel, I think uh, uh, we would like to really thank the Val Benel family for. Uh, endorsing and supporting this prize and uh, strengthening the, the math, the applied math community in Israel. Yehi uh, Baruch. All right. So um, now I uh, will tell you a little bit about something. So I first studied uh, um, applied math and partial differential equations and diffusion processes, but in the last few years I, I still do various topics in applied math. Uh, but uh, I also expanded my, my research interests into uh, um, data analysis, uh, machine learning, uh, um, uh, signal image processing, and more. And uh, I'll tell you today about one of these works. So uh, the formal title is Unsupervised Ensemble Learning, but the true title is How to Make Accurate Predictions When You Know Almost Nothing. And this is joint work with many collaborators. I'll just mention one, Yuval Kluger, who's a professor at the Yale Medical School. Uh, he came, we've had a very uh, productive collaboration uh, with, a, with a concrete application, and I'll discuss it a little bit later on. Okay. Um, so, one of the things that I'm very interested in the last few years is, is very statistical and mathematical challenges related to, to analyzing data, contemporary data, big data, etc. Uh, for example, uh, in some cases, data does not even fit into a single machine, and, and then people do uh, distributed learning or inference, and I'll not talk about it uh, today. We, we wrote one paper about this, if someone is interested in a reasonably readable paper. Uh, 
But another uh, common theme is that sometimes data is collected from many sources, many places, or comes from many different uh, uh, sources, and you need to somehow merge it or fuse it. And uh, uh, um, this will be the focus of this talk. It's um, not very technical, I, I hope. Where's your dog? I think even my son and, and, and Hadass will, will be able to learn to study, to, to understand part of it. I'm, I'm not joking. And also my wife will take part in it as well. You'll see in a minute. Okay, so the, the question is how to merge the predictions of multiple experts. So uh, um, let me be concrete. Suppose we're looking at a binary classification problem. So you, there are certain things you observe, features, and you want to predict a, an outcome, a label, which is either plus one or minus one. Let's say if a person has cancer or does not have cancer, uh, if he will repay the loan or not, etc. Uh, and of course, the goal in, in, in machine learning is, is to construct a classifier that would have what we call good generalization performance, small risk, small uh, prediction error. And the typical way uh, uh, it's done, it's called supervised learning. Uh, there is some label set. You have some examples positive, some examples are negative, and you somehow uh, 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 construct a classifier. And there are many, many different methods to do so, and also relatively well understood theory. Uh, uh, this morning we had a talk that uh, described uh, how to do it in, uh, for a, 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 a certain application. Uh, so if there are so many different methods to construct classifiers, one can think about a setting where you have m different classifiers or experts, and maybe each one was constructed in a different lab or with its own da data and assumptions, etc. And then there are two key questions. Uh, First, you want to rank them, you want to find who's the most accurate classifier, and you want to somehow combine them and, and get even better predictions, okay? Uh, and again, the standard way to do so, if you're in a supervised setting, is that you have an additional, we call it validation data, it's labeled, and you just apply your M expert on this data, you see how well they do, the one who does the best, would, in general, you would pick that one, and there are also many different methods to combine them. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, the central question I'm going to talk about in this talk is, suppose those M experts or classifiers are black boxes or pre-constructed, and you just see their predictions on a very large test data. OK, so the, the only thing that you see, you have M experts, and there are many, many, many instances, and you just get a binary matrix of plus ones and minus ones each expert, its predictions over many, many, many instances. You have no labeled data. You don't know how these were constructed. You, know how, you don't know their accuracy. And the question is, can you still find out who's the most accurate? And can you uh, uh, combine them uh, and get a better uh, classifier? I'll give you an example for the teenagers. You sit in class. You didn't study for the exam, of course. But you get to see the answers of all your fellow classmates. Now, you don't know who's smart and who's not smart, but you see their answers. So by seeing the answers of all your different classmates on an American exam, multiple choice exam, can you find out who's the, the smartest, just copy his results, or maybe combine them and even get the highest grade in class and get a prestigious scholarship. OK? Don't do this. Uh, OK? <laughs> All right, but that's the, the idea. Okay. So uh, I'll give you one example, uh, uh, and I told you that my wife will take part in this talk. So, you know, I'm in academia, so I don't earn a lot of money, and my wife takes most of it. It's a true story. And I get, she leaves me a little bit of money to invest in the stock market, and I don't know anything about the stock market, but think about investing in the S&P 500, the 500 stocks. Uh, you can buy some, sell some, etc. Uh, I don't know anything about the stock market, but I can look at the Wall Street Journal, or I can ask my friends, uh, uh, and I, you can ask your mother-in-law, and, and each one is, is an expert. You can ask your, uh, your investment banker, and each one gives you his recommendations. Uh, uh, Yossi will tell me, buy uh, IBM, sell uh, Microsoft, etc. Aidan will tell me the opposite. Now, I don't know who's an expert. Actually, you don't know that, but Aitan is an amazing <laughs> mathematician, but he knows nothing about the stock market. <laughs> Whereas Yossi, 
uh, is an expert in the stock market, but I don't know that a priori. And Gadi just flipped the coin. He didn't. Okay. So I get this matrix of binary uh, uh, predictions by this, sell this, and the question is, can I still, without knowing anything, can I still find out who's in a reliable uh, advisor, and maybe how can, it's a, it's a female investor, how can she combine the possibly conflicting advices of these different entities and get to a reasonable decision? How to make a good decision when you know almost nothing? Uh, the true uh, scientific problem that we faced was not this one, and this is, this is how this whole project started. Uh, uh, Yuval Kluger, who's a computational biologist, he came to me and told me, look, there are many, many very challenging problems in biology that uh, uh, the way people are trying to solve them is by a consortium of many uh, um, different teams. Each one builds its own prediction machine, and now the task is maybe to combine them. There is a website, it's called DREAM. Uh, it's an acronym for Dialogue for Reverse Engineering Assessment and Methods. And um, it's, uh, uh, there are many open challenges there. You can download the data and look at it. One of the challenges we looked at is the following. You have your DNA string, very, very long, uh, uh, millions of locations. And you want to detect locations that have irregularities related to cancer, other diseases, etc. And in this particular case, we had access to something like 100 different experts, if you wish. Uh, uh, these were algorithms, prediction algorithms, uh, constructed by different labs. Uh, I, I don't know how they were constructed, but I only got their predictions. And the question was, how can we combine their prediction? How can we find who of them is more correct than others? And how can we combine them and get a more accurate prediction? Okay? And there are many problems of this kind. Uh, so that was the, the, the true scientific challenge. Uh, uh, and what's common to, to, to these two examples is that we observe the predictions or recommendations of many experts of unknown reliability or expertise. Uh, we don't have labeled data. It may be either expensive to obtain or I'll know it only in the future. Uh, and this appears in a broad range of applications. Uh, there's a whole field about decision science, which is about how to make decisions uh, given experts' opinions. Uh, there's something called crowdsourcing where you... Uh, I, I, Relegate to a crowd of, of typically uh, 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 students, uh, you give them five cents for each answer, uh, 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 and they give you their predictions. Uh, it happens in medicine, right? Uh, you have a uh, complicated patient, you ask for the opinion of several uh, doctors, they don't always agree, etc., uh, etc. Et okay, so uh, uh, what can you do? First of all, uh, we live in a democracy, I think. Uh, and in democracy, we vote, and each vote counts exactly the same, and, and, and that's how democracy works. Majority voting, you just see what the crowd prefers. It's highly suboptimal for learning. I don't say anything about uh, science in general, but for learning, it's highly suboptimal. Uh, there have been many works. Uh, uh, Maurice de Groot was a, was a famous statistician, and he, he wrote a paper about this. Uh, uh, what I'll talk about today is somewhat related to the last uh, thing here, uh, some spectral method that were developed by people at MIT. So what I'm going to show you today in the limited amount of time I have is a very simple approach to this problem. And it will be an applied math type approach. We'll just look at matrices, their spectrum, their eigenvectors, eigenvalues, uh, a very simple spectral analysis of this problem. OK. Uh, I'll just uh, make a single assumption. I'll show you how, with that assumption, uh, uh, you can solve this problem very easily, linear algebra. And if I have time, I'll discuss, uh, I'll relax it, and still, there will still be simple structure to exploit. Uh, and this will allow to rank the classifiers, estimate their accuracies, etc., etc. Okay. Um, let me five minutes before I. Yeah. Okay, great. So, ah, let me mention beforehand, I'm going to cheat you two or three times. You have to catch me, okay? Uh, uh, but uh, this slide does not, is, this is kosher. Uh, the cheating is later on. So, a, a binary classification problem, we have instances, 
uh, things about these locations in the DNA or images or characteristics for a person. We have an output space. Let's say it's binary, so each instance has a label y plus or minus mine. These are random variables. I don't know the distributions. Now, what is a classifier? It's just a function that takes an input and outputs a predicted label. And when you uh, um, uh, uh, want to understand the quality of a classifier, there are two quantities that are very common in medicine. One is called sensitivity, and one is called specificity. These are the, the probability to output the true label uh, the true label when it's positive or the true label when it's negative. And another very common quantity when you uh, uh, assess a classifier, one is just its overall accuracy, if you wish. But if you have an unbalanced problem, let's say you want to predict if someone has cancer. Most people don't have cancer. If I tell that everybody doesn't have cancer, I'm, I don't know, 99, 95% correct. It's not very useful. There's something called balanced accuracy, which is the average of these two quantities. It's a very common measure uh, uh, of, of assessing the accuracy of a classifier. And I'll show you in a minute how this quantity appears naturally in our setup. OK, so what we have is a set of instances, and this just this binary matrix, plus ones and minus ones. And we want to rank classifiers, combine them, but we have no label data whatsoever. OK, so let's think about it. I have this big matrix. Uh, uh, some experts are very accurate. Others uh, are very inaccurate, uh, or maybe even uh, malicious. Uh, what we are good, we, you need to assume something. If, if that matrix, everybody flipped the coin, I, I, I wouldn't know that, OK? So the assumption I'm going to make is that each expert has some accuracy. And different experts make uh, statistically independent errors. OK, this is called conditional independence. Uh, mathematically, it says that given the class label, different experts uh, uh, output their predictions irrespective of each other. It's not as if I first look what Yossi proposes, uh, 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 predict, and then I, ah, uh, uh, I'll follow him. I, I make my own prediction independently. This is known. Today is the, the Whedon skin model, but it goes back to the 1950s. Uh, so this is the assumption we're going to make. See, it's, uh, this is a graphical model of this uh, presentation. OK, so let's, this is the single assumption I'm going to make. Let's see if under this assumption we can detect, let's say, if one of the experts was very accurate and if maybe one of the experts was very, was just flipped the coin. So let's assume that one expert, uh, Eitan, just flipped the coin. Okay, he's totally random. Can I detect that? So his row is just a rows of plus and minus ones. Uh, but if it's totally random, what would be its relation to any other row in the matrix? None. It's, uh, under this assumption, uh, 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 the correlation between different rows would be close to zero. On the other hand, if I had two experts, which are both very accurate, they both give the true label 90, 95% of the time, yes, they make errors, but they um, agree most of the time. So their vectors would be highly correlated. Okay? So this means that maybe we should look at all pairs of correlations between the different experts. And this is exactly what we did in a paper we published in uh, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences a few years ago. Uh, we looked at this, it's called a covariance matrix. It's, it's the correlation between different experts. And it turned out that this matrix, under this single assumption, has a very simple structure. It's written here. The exact details are not important. The important thing is that the off-diagonal entries have a very simple form. Uh, pi, remember, is the balanced accuracy of the classifiers. And it's a rank one matrix. OK, right? Qij is some vi times some vj times some constant, doesn't matter. So it's a rank one matrix. And uh, the eigenvector of this rank one matrix is precisely this vector of balanced accuracies. So uh, here is what you can do. Compute the covariance. Oops. 
Yes, compute the covariance matrix of the classifiers. Uh, uh, you need to correspond to the diagonal. It's not, these are technical details. It's not so important. Compute the leading eigenvector. Sort its entries from largest to smallest. The largest one is the most expert classifier. You can either follow him or later on we'll show how you can combine them. But this is it. Okay? By the way, I cheated you, but... Uh, if nobody caught me, they should go back to linear algebra. Uh, so, let me tell you one place I cheated you. Uh, eigenvectors are not always unique. They're unique only up to a plus one or minus one sign. Actually written here. So when I compute the eigenvector of the matrix and I sort the entries, I can either follow the best expert or the worst. Not so ideal to follow the worst. Okay? So I need, for example, an extra assumption that most experts are better than random. Okay? I cheated you somewhere else, but that would be for the next time. Okay. So, uh, uh, in a follow-up paper with, with, with my student, uh, uh, Ariel Yaffe, who uh, was really great and, and pushed this uh, uh, <coughs> project much further, uh, uh, we also showed how you can estimate all the other quantities in this problem, the actual specificity and sensitivity. Uh, we uh, showed that it's consistent. We, we, we applied, a, again, a, a matrix perturbation analysis and, and show that all the errors in estimating the various quantities are, are, are a, a scale like one of the square root of the number of samples, which is rate optimal in statistics uh, for, this, for this problem in general. Uh, and we also looked at how to combine the classifiers. I mean, you can either take the one who is most accurate or maybe you can combine them. Typically, combining the opinions of different people is much better than just taking uh, uh, a single one. And uh, again, under this assumption that different experts make different uh, 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 errors, you can compute what is the optimal or the maximum likelihood uh, 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 classifier. And, and it's a weighted, it's, it's the sign of some, you take each, each expert and you weight it by some weight. And the weight depends on those parameters that you don't know. So you need to somehow estimate them. Uh, uh, Trying to find these parameters directly from the data, it's a non-convex problem. It's with many parameters if you have many experts. It's, it's, it's a computationally challenging problem, but we've just had a spectral approach that estimates these quantities quite accurately. Uh, uh, and so, yes, so estimating these quantities directly from the data is a non-convex problem. It's computationally difficult. Uh, what the Widenskin did back uh, almost 40 years ago, uh, 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 they did what is known as expectation maximization problem. You first let's do majority voting, you get a guess of Y, you get a guess of, of the label, then you can estimate the sensitivity and specificity. You get those quantities, you can re-estimate Y, etc. You do this until you converge. This is a very a common method to optimize many problems in, 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 in statistics and machine learning. Uh, but this method only, con and it's widely used, but this method only is guaranteed to convert to a local optima. And uh, sometimes I give this talk in the US, and uh, uh, the question is, can we do better? When Obama was president, I would say, yes, we can. Now, Trump is president, so I say, let's make EM great again. Uh, and um, what we can do is borrow from our very simple spectral approach, Take the estimates that we got from there, just plug them in, maybe just do one iteration of EM. We call this a spectral meta learner because it's, it's spectral based. And, uh, and apply it. You can also prove various, various properties about it. I will not go into it right now. Uh, I'll show you one example. Uh, there are many more in our, in our paper. Uh, and of course, you should be very skeptical. I made various assumptions, they may not hold in practice. Uh, yeah, let's skip this. Um, we did many, many, uh, 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 many tests on, 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 on real data, and of course there's, there was no free lunch. On data sets where our sample covariance matrix was close to rank one, which is consistent with our assumptions the method worked well, when that was violated, our method did not work well. 
Uh, I'll show you one example, uh, uh, going back to the stock market. We took data from the New York Stock Exchange. We took ten de nine days of trading and asked, can you predict if on the 10th day, the stock would go 5% higher? It's a good thing to know that, to predict that if, if possible. And we constructed many different classifiers, and then we apply them to, to, to test data from different years. Uh, and I think we had something like 33 different classifiers. Now, what I'm showing you on the very right, that uh, uh, black bar, that is the median accuracy, balanced accuracy of the, all the experts. Five minutes. Okay. Another 40 slides to go. Uh, uh, so, this is a predicting stuff about the stock market is challenging. Uh, in this example, most uh, uh, experts were as good as random, some were even worse than random. Okay, it's possible to be worse than random, but because if, if you trained on some data and test data does, comes from a different distribution, you're even worse. Uh, the blue line is, is what uh, standard procedure would give you. It, you start from a bad solution, you, you get stuck there. In a few, few cases, you get something better. Uh, and the other box plots are variants of, of, of our spectral approach. Uh, I'm still here. I didn't open a startup company. <laughs> it's half plus a little bit better than half. Maybe you can make some money out of it, but uh, 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 try this at your own risk. Uh, OK. Um, yes, now we went back to the actual um, uh, computational biology problem we had. Remember, there we had 100 different experts, or, or uh, predictions of 100 different algorithms. Uh, and I can tell you that each of them was more than 90% accurate. Now, if they were all making independent errors, you would just take majority voting. You can do a simple uh, 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 inequality. It's called Hofding inequality, and you get that the majority voting would give you an error of 10 to the minus 10. No. Uh, uh, so this was an example where the 100 different experts violated this assumption. And together with my student, uh, 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 Ariel, we asked, is it possible to detect still no labeled data whatsoever? We, in this uh, example, we really we just downloaded the data that was available on the website as the competition was still ongoing, so we didn't know the grand truth. Uh, so can you uh, detect totally unsupervised manner classifiers that are strongly dependent, that strongly violate the assumption, uh, uh, but they're not necessarily accurate. And uh, for that, we proposed a, a, a more complicated model in which different experts, so this is like different uh, uh, students went to the same teacher, and therefore, if the teacher got things wrong, they also get things wrong. But uh, uh, students who went to different universities or different uh, 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 teachers, they still maintain this, assu this uh, assumption of, of making independent errors. Uh, and we developed, again, I won't have uh, time to describe it. We, again, it turns out that, that even under this model, the covariance matrix is a simple low rank structure. Uh, uh, it allows to infer. Uh, 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 this tree structure, which one be belongs to which. It, it allows to combine them now in a nonlinear way. And I'll just show you some results. Uh, I, we had three different data sets. Uh, and the very far right is uh, the, the, the error, the balanced error, so lower is better, that we got with our method. Uh, and you see, in some cases, we got better than the best single expert we, we didn't know beforehand because we didn't have the grand trust at the time. We also uh, participated in an ongoing competition at the time. We didn't win, but we were one of the top uh, places with these very simple methods. Uh, everybody's doing deep learning now, so I can tell you that with deep learning, we got even better results, but then I don't have any nice uh, theory to say. Uh, so uh, before uh, Gadi kicks me, uh, um, data science is, 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 is an exploding field. Uh, I, I, um, it's very diverse. There are many applications, but there are also interesting mathematical problems in there in the foundations of how to analyze 
uh, data. That's what one of the things I'm doing. Uh, here I showed you one example of that, uh, uh, where a very simple spectral analysis uh, 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 uncovers interesting structure. Uh, I didn't have time to discuss, but uh, uh, for some problems you have to go beyond matrices, you have to go to tensors. And uh, there are many appli other applications that I'm working on. Uh, uh, if someone is interested in more details, uh, there, are, there are many papers, uh, I think they're on my website. And uh, with that, I will conclude. Thank you.